We all know protein packs plenty of benefits. Want to lose weight? Increase your protein, and you're likely to eat less of everything else. Want to improve on your body composition? Increase your protein to help build muscle and lose fat. But for all the focus on protein and all the research published in recent years, we still don't have answers to some important questions. In this episode, we'll dive deeper into that. My name is Jeremy Cologne, and this is The Dark Side of Fitness, episode 31. Before we start, these are the questions. Does additional protein, the amount you eat above your habitual intake, improve upon the gains in lean body mass, LBM, from resistance training? Does it help you increase strength or improve functional abilities? Is the effect the same for younger and older people? Does additional protein improve LBM, strength, or function in someone who isn't doing any form of resistance re exercises? A new systematic review and meta-analysis offer some answers. Also, before we dive deeper, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. You'll find this study very surprising. What the study found, the researchers looked for randomized controlled trials, RCTs, that met a bunch of specific criteria. They ended up with 74 studies for this review, which had a huge range of protocols. I say this to acknowledge that it wasn't super straightforward, clear-cut analysis. So here's a summary. In the intervention groups, total daily protein ranged from 1.0 to 4.0 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. More than half used at least 1.6 grams kilograms a day, which is considered the optimal protein take for maximizing muscle growth for most people. In the placebo or control groups, protein ranged from 0.8 to 2.3 grams kilograms a day. Additional protein, the amount given to participants in the intervention groups over and above what they normally ate, ranged from five to 100 grams per day. 84% of the studies added between 10 to 50 grams per day. The majority added 10 to 30. The big findings. Additional protein ingestion probably leads to a small increase in lean body mass. The key word there is small, though that might depend on your point of view. The effects of protein pale in comparison to those induced by resistance training, according to Stuart Phillips, PhD, study co-author, and professor of exercise science at McMaster University, who's also one of the world's leading authorities on protein. He said on an, on, a, on an individual level, the effects are almost non-detectable. For those consuming most protein per day, the researchers calculated the average lean body mass gain as 2.9 to 3.3 pounds, about 1.3 to 1.5 kilograms in 12 weeks. But the control groups who consume less protein also gain a small amount of lean body mass, about 1.8 pounds, roughly 0.8 kilograms. In most of the studies, participants in both groups lifted weights. That means the average difference between those who got more protein and those who didn't was, as Dr. Phillips calls it, modest. What amounts to an extra 1.1 to 1.5 pounds, 0.5 to 0.7 kilograms of lean body mass over 12 weeks time? Dr. Phillips wants you to know two things about this. First, lean body mass, the way it's measured in the studies, isn't the same as muscle. He says that while lean body mass does have muscle in it, it's likely that only about 50 to 60% of it is actual as actually muscle. Though this number can vary. So for context, a three pound gain in lean body mass is probably only around 1.5 to 1.8 pounds of muscle. Second, he says people often make the incorrect assumption that these differences continue beyond the 12 week period and will keep accumulating. Simply stated, he says, they don't. Unless you're younger and still growing, gains are likely to dissipate after six months or so based on Dr. Phil's experience in research. And in case you're wondering, only six studies measured LBM gains in participants who received additional protein without also undergoing resistance training. The results suggest any benefit from the additional protein alone is minuscule and, and non-significant. In short, protein without resistance training did nothing, Philip says. One more detail you don't wanna miss also is, in 80% in 80 of the studies not, um, analyzed, Participants said they were already eating at least 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram per day in their habitual diets. That means most were reasonably close to optimizing their protein intake for muscle growth before the study even started. As a result, the lean body mass gains from additional protein may have been somewhat muted. The benefits of consuming optimal protein would likely be larger for folks currently consuming lower amounts, such as the RDA of 0.8 grams or kilograms. Here are some coaching takeaways from this study. Number one, when it comes to muscle growth, protein doesn't help much without resistance training. It'd be more helpful for muscle maintenance, but Dr. Phillips says even that's a little shaky. Number two, even with resistance training, the benefits of protein are limited. Protein does appear to enhance strength and lean mass gains, Dr. Phillips says, but it's a thin slice on top of what just going to the gym regularly does. 
Keep in mind that thin slice can certainly be meaningful depending on an individual's goals and appetite for additional protein. So for example, if you could gain 2.9 to 3.3 pounds of lean body mass in 12 weeks versus just 1.8 pounds, that might feel pretty significant. And if you hit those numbers again or something close to them over the next 12 weeks, it'd be two to three extra pounds of lean body mass overall. Most folks looking to put on size would take that. The bottom line, if you want to optimize muscle growth, lift weights and shoot for 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram per day, says Dr. Phillips. But he adds, once you get beyond that 1.6 grams, kilograms per day, most people won't see additional benefits. Individual results can vary, of course, and a previous meta-analysis suggests certain outliers may require up to 2.2 gram kilograms to maximize results. Number three, for most people, the type of protein doesn't matter very much. 10 years ago, I would have told you that protein type matters, Dr. Phillips says, but now, especially for younger, healthy, active folks, the source is relatively unimportant. If you're getting 1.6 grams per kilogram per day, you can worry far less about animal or plant-based or supplements versus real food. One exception though, folks who are 65 or older, for them, Dr. Phillips says, higher quality supplements, those made from dairy or egg proteins, could offer a small benefit over plant-based choices. Okay, one last thought. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to listen and view this video. As always, please like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody who could benefit from this. Love your support. Love the comments. Let's keep it going. See you on the next one. Take care.